All right, good morning, everyone, and welcome to another episode of How I Met Your Mortgage. Uh, as always, I'm your host, Adam Smith, with Just the Tips Coaching, and with us again, as always, is our marketing director and one of our coaches, Jen Weibower. Good morning, Jen. Been a long time since I've seen you. I think we uh, got back from an event, oh, I don't know, about six o'clock last night that we both uh, spoke at to some mortgage originators in Austin. So to uh, spend my weekends with Jen, that's going to make it seven days in a row. This will be eight. Very interesting. All right. And our guest this week, we're very excited to have with us. I can't uh, say enough nice things and I'm very appreciative that he was willing to participate in this hoot and nanny. Um, Antoine Glover, Antoine, good morning. Thank you for joining us. Good morning, my friend. How the heck are you? <laughs> we're, we're doing good. Um, you know, with only a single time zone jump, we don't even have much in the way of jet lag. Man, there's no rest for the weary. You just burn that midnight oil, aren't you? We're, we're pretty busy these days. I, I am glad to say we're home for like 10 whole days before we do it again. Nice. Yeah. Good stuff. Yeah. I always say, I always say, if you're busy, that means you're not hungry. I guess, except that we don't have time to eat. (laughs) (laughs) We can buy the food. We just can't find the time to ingest it. So, Antoine, let's get right into it. Tell us a little bit about you. um, Certainly, where you are now, uh, your market, who you work for, um, and how you got your start in real estate, because we, we know your background, but uh, I think our audience will be fascinated by this. Yeah, well, I actually, you know, kind of got, kind of fell into to real estate uh, approximately about 10 years ago. My actual background um, is radio and television. So I was 16 years old uh, when I was had the opportunity to become a radio news reporter and news anchor. Um, my people that I looked up to back in the day was, you know, was Paul Harvey. And so you remember the rest of the story. And so I was fortunate enough to start my career path um, in that uh, when I was 16, like I mentioned, uh, from Redding, California, about three hours north of Sacramento. Um, ventured into the uh, television side of my 20s and uh, moved out here about 20 years ago. And uh, shortly after 9-11, I knew that telling you you're going to die, find out tonight how, um, was not for me. So I left that, got into the restaurant business. A uh, gentleman you may have heard or know of, uh, his name is Dave Karcher, and he's a, a very successful real estate agent um, at the time. It was about 10 years ago, and I was kind of left the, the media, got into the restaurant world, and he said, what are you doing in the restaurant business? Because you do fantastic. Now, Adam, you remember this at the time when you would talk to other, everybody in the real estate world, from lending to any real estate, and it was like your mom died. It's like, oh my gosh, how's the market? Yeah. And Dave was smiling. He says, hey, I'm 20, I'm having the time of my life. And I'm kind of scratching my head. And so he started becoming very successful in the, in the, um, the, um, the foreclosure market. And so what he did is he just adjusted his sales, right? And, and uh, held on to his car. And about two weeks later, I demoted myself from a manager to uh, serving. I went to, uh, was at Jones Real Estate School. And, um, and then I realized that um, it was a pretty tough market. So I started in the new build side. And I slowly but surely worked my way up and failed a lot uh, to become very successful. And I always want to emphasize, uh, always want to preface this. I became successful during a quote unquote bad time in the market. And I say, if you can really become good during a quote bad time, you can become great at anything that you want to do at any time. So that's where I am today. I went from the new build side. Now I do the resale side. I'm also, um, also a developer as well. So we're doing a $19 million project. Uh, we'll tell you a little bit more about that in Fair Play. We're actually bringing light to Fair Play, building 200 homes up there, as well as a, a hotel. So that's kind of me in a nutshell where I came from and uh, where I'm at today. Um, okay, so completely off the subject of what we want our audience to know, but uh, certainly an entertaining factor. I know Reading. 
Um, it's, <laughs> I, I know Reading. It's uh, been a long, long time, but uh, I actually, <laughs> I did a boarding school in Whitmore 30 years ago. It is a small world. It is a small world, no question. And it's funny because uh, Jen and I, with normal air travel type of conversation, had that uh, exact conversation with somebody about uh, the smallest, dinkiest airports we'd seen. And 30 years ago, that was Redding, California. <laughs> <laughs> there were four gates. You walked down the stairs onto the tarmac, and your bag was on a shelf there waiting for you. You had to grab your own bag right off the airplane, basically, and <laughs> walk into the building. A little different than the air travel we experience today. Right. What but. a small world, man. Nobody knows that part. Of it. That's why I always have to prep. I have to say Sacramento, three hours north of Sacramento. So far north, we call uh, San Francisco SoCal. That's right. Yeah, it's, it's, it's closer to Oregon than it is to right. Sac right. or San Francisco. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. good stuff. Um, all right, so... <laughs> I, I want our audience to understand something that you said, or I want to emphasize it anyway, because I do think it's a very important point. The real estate market, the mortgage market, um, basically anything that fits within kind of the dome of what Just the Tips would cover for people who do direct-to-consumer type of sales work, we all operate in very dynamic markets. Whether it happens to be a heavy foreclosure market, a heavy REO market, uh, whether it's a heavy new build market, like today, whether it's a heavy seller's market, if you are operating in a dynamic fashion, as dynamic as the industry is, you're going to be successful. So for a real estate agent who's seen the kind of history in the market that you have or that we have, there's no bad time. You just need to operate in a different manner. I think right. is really what I want you guys to understand. So we've already talked about people who have been unrealistically successful, ridiculously successful in what we would have called a bad market at the time. And that's because there's really no such thing that's a myth. The seasonality that things quiet down for people in November, December, it's a myth. If you guys are doing your work and you're working hard and you guys know what you need to be doing for the most part, you're never going to have bad months. Maybe one out of 12. Um, you know, if you get into two out of 12 or three out of 12, maybe you ought to consider a different line of work. Um, but literally the bottom line here is that there's no bad time to be in the market. And one of the things that I tell all of my real estate coaching clients to respond with when someone asks, how's the market? is, well, that depends. Are you buying, selling, or investing? You know, I couldn't agree with you more. It's exactly what I tell people um, because so many of us in this industry, it's a great market. It's a down market. Yeah. Are you looking to buy, sell, or invest? I, I utilize that that same lingo, and it, and it prompts a, a, a conversation from that point. Well, you know, my wife and I were, oh, we know we're downsized. You know, hey, we're thinking about investing. I never tell anybody I'm a realtor. I tell, what do you do for a living? Right. Other people buy, sell, and invest in real estate. All right. So tell us about this transition because I'm curious. Going from working in the new build arena, and you've kind of right. circled back to that on your own, but right. tell us about that transition a decade ago from going in from the new build arena into basically where you're at now. Well, it's actually, for me, I think it was actually, uh, I have an advantage uh, going from the new build side. A, I've learned patience. <laughs> That's fantastic. You don't get paid, brother. I don't care if you have 20 contracts. You don't get paid for six to eight months. So you better just hurry up and wait. So I, I've learned patience. I learned how that process works. Um, and then on top of that, what I did is I figured out that about 70, probably 80% of my business came from realtors. And so, so many times we wanted to, it's almost the same thing in a, in a real estate as a realtor. You want to kind of do everything to everybody. And you want to try to befriend every realtor from the new build side. Well, I started figuring the numbers out. Let's just have an example. Let's just say if I wanted to do 20 homes, right? I wanted to sell 20 homes. I really, I really needed to befriend 10 really awesome agents that we work in concert with. 
And so all I'm asking is just bring me one. Just bring me one a year. That's all I'm looking for. So I work half as hard to get to my goal. And then when I started developing a system, there was no booklet. It's interesting when you're hungry, going back to circling around, when you're hungry, your mind starts to go, okay, how can I, how can I feed myself, so to speak, as a metaphor? And so I started with these handful of realtors, and it worked like a gem, is, I'll give you an example. Let's say if our price point was three fifty. Somebody walks in and says, you know, I'm looking for something for two seventy five. Well, normally, we don't have anything for two seventy five. I would say, well, hold on. Are you working with an agent? No. I actually can help you. Give me your information. I pick up the phone. Hey, Adam, how you doing, buddy? Got you a free lead. Okay. Well, what do you want? I don't want anything. No referral fee? No, no. No. Nobody does that. Exactly. Exactly. And my point was, and what I started to create was, uh, A, a great relationship with my realtors, and, and B, they were starting to think of me, and I used this analogy when, if I was new in town and I needed furniture, what's the first furniture store that pops into your head? American hey. Furniture Warehouse. Jake Jabs, you got it. That is all I wanted. And from that moment forward, I started developing a following with my realtors. So now going from the new bill side to now as a realtor in their game, now it's actually, it's mutually beneficial for both of us because now they're going to see who's on the other side of that transaction. And now we can start having this wonderful dialogue knowing that we're going to work for our clients to get everybody to close. So for me, it was a little bit more challenging, a little different, but at the same time, it was, it was, it was a good, it was a big thing. It was a big time for me to, to leave the building world and now venture into the grand, grand scheme of things here. I'm looking, it's like a blizzard out here, by the way. Really? It's crazy. Okay. I not hear yet. <laughs> this is absolutely crazy. So, squirrel. I, I don't really sure. Well, if you don't like the weather in Colorado, wait a minute. Right, I don't, right? Yeah. So that, for me, it was an interesting transition, but it was, uh, it was, it was kind of like a, it wasn't a big, like, oh my gosh, what am I supposed to do? Because I treated, uh, the, when I was in the building side, I treated it like it, it should be. It was my business. I didn't work for the builder. Those people that came in, those were my clients. I'm working for them. And I had so many people over the years, they would, they would go, are, are you the owner of this company? No, but I treat it as such. And I have that same mentality because uh, I am. I'm the CEO. You're the CEO of your company. And you need to treat it as such. Um, took me a little while to kind of get that. But that, um, you know, my success, I always kind of say, I know you've heard this, it's, it was an overnight success after about 10 years. <laughs> that's good. And that's yes, awesome. that's about exactly how it works. It's funny because I do recall from that conversation, somebody once asking me, that was the night before I was speaking at a, a, a different but similar mortgage conference as the, the one that Jen and I were at this weekend. Um, and they asked me, what's the one thing you would do? To, to you know, you tell somebody to get where you're at. And I said, work hard for 20 years. <laughs> if I've got to narrow it down to one thing, that's the one thing I would tell you to do. Is... You, you know, the one thing I wish I would have learned earlier. I'm a huge, I'm a huge book guy. Right behind you. I wish I would have dived into more of the personal growth earlier in my career. I think if had I really if, if jumped in, I think I would. I can, you know. To do it all over again, that's the only thing I would have done differently. You know, I was just trying to sell homes, trying to sell homes, trying to sell homes. And I was starting to feel empty when I was selling homes. And then I started researching, I'm like, you know, who's this Tony Robbins guy? Who's this Les Brown guy? Right? And it led me down a path. And now it's not just about real estate, it's anything. I feel more confident now about anything, any business venture that I decide to go into because I have the backing of the personal growth that's stuck in here and I can start all over again. It's a cool feeling. And, and don't get me wrong, I am more than sympathetic. I didn't even fathom that there was all of this substantial and fantastic literature that would help propel me 20 years ago. And now the volume of books and 
articles that are available to all of you watching that can help further your mindset, your career, your daily activity, your organization, just on and on. So yes, absolutely important activity. And I probably have you know a dozen books stacked up on my desk. There are some here on my uh, home office desk, obviously in the bookcase. Uh, actually, that's true uh, here and as well as in my office. But yeah, I think that you and I and probably the majority of real estate agents, mortgage originators, insurance people, financial planners, probably all had that same trap. And I think a lot of it's the outside noise. There are a lot of shiny objects being thrown at all of us when we're new. It's hard to filter through that. And two is that you're, you're busy. I don't want to downplay that. It's just that you're busy working in your business instead of on your business, not to put too fine a point on an antiquated colloquialism, but I think that that's absolutely the case. So yes, for those of you watching, please take Antoine's advice, if not mine, certainly, and read. Yeah, what, what's that saying? Uh, earners are learners. Or learners are earners. You know, however you want to, you know, people ask me all the time, I'm sure you're probably going to ask me, I'm sorry if I jumped the gun, but you know, how do you get your leads? How do you get your leads? How do you get your leads? Let's roll you know, into it. And, well, and I tell you what, I wake up at four in the morning. A, I just, that's just, I'm trained to do that. I just, I'm waking up. I know a good portion of people in my profession are sleeping when I'm awake. I know a good portion of people are just starting their day getting their emails while I'm reading. I know a good portion of the people that are laying in the warm bed when I don't feel like being at the gym. I feed my mind, I feed my body positivity. And that positivity, I'm energized physically, I'm energized emotionally. And so when I am going out into the public, there's just something different about this guy. I love his attitude, I love his positivity, what do you do for him? Man, and you're in real estate? I want to work with this guy. That, I mean, you just put all those recipes together and I didn't recreate the wheel. My friends, it is the simplest thing, not easy, the simplest thing, all I did was get the recipe from people who I want to become. And they'll tell you. It just takes time. Uh, they will tell you. And the reason that they'll tell you, and uh, Jen and I covered a lot of this with some colleagues over this past weekend, and obviously Antoine reflects this to the nth degree, he's got an abundance mindset. It's simple as that, guys. He is happy to be here today sharing what's helped him become successful with you just as people had done for him in the past because he does not have a scarcity mindset. It's got to be the most important attitude factor you're ever going to have in business. It will make you successful beyond anything you can imagine. If you're currently in a scarcity mindset and you shift that into an abundance mindset, it will change your world. I, I tell people, you know, if you really think about it, just from a real estate perspective, a realtor's perspective, and this is really good, I think it's just really good advice going back to your abundance. A hundred percent of human beings in the world need shelter. That's a fact. So having said that, don't go out there and try to sell real estate. It's they need it. Go out there and make tons of Friends, the relationship that we keep talking about, it is the hardest thing for people, a lot of people in our industry to get, is to literally, I'm like, hey, who's your best friend? Jennifer. Well, how did you meet Jennifer? Well, we met at a barbecue. Hi, how are you? What do you like to do? I like to do that. Before you know what, Jennifer's your BFF, right? Can you imagine, and I use this analogy, if I was a doctor, I just I'm a doctor, I'm a good doctor, and Adam invited me, he invited me over for a barbecue. And I had my stethoscope, and I had my jacket on, right? And I'm like, hey, I'm a doctor, do you need a doctor? Hey, do you need, if you need a doctor, give me a call, I'm a doctor. Even if I needed a doctor, I'm not going to use you, you're weird. <laughs> and, and, friends. and it's, 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 it's like I said, it's so simple, but sometimes when we get into this industry, we feel we have to just go out there and sell people. Ah, you know what I do for a living. That's it. 
If you need my help, let me know. Just like, hey, I just hurt my back. Who would you recommend for a chiropractor? Go see my friend such and such. Brilliant. And for me, that's where I get the majority of my leads. And you are preaching to the choir. Jen and I teach religiously that letting people know what you do is not difficult. If you're interacting with people, all of you watching, if you're not interacting with people who know what you do, let me rephrase that. If you're interacting with people and they don't know what you do, you're already failing. That, that, that's, that's the 20%. Letting people know who you are, what you're about, what you're like, that you're either the creepy doctor with the stethoscope or whatever the case may be, but the who you are, that's the 80% of the work that you guys need to be doing in your live interactions, your conversations, your social media, your video, etc. That's the piece that you need to be getting out there. That's how you're going to attract like-minded individuals, people that you like and would want to work with you. That's how you're going to repel the people that you wouldn't want to work with as well. And this is important stuff. That 80% of the who you are and be authentic in it is going to pay dividends beyond being, I'm a doctor and here's my stethoscope so you know I'm a doctor. You're never going to see a doctor the right. <laughs> oh, never. No, absolutely. Every one of them is going to creep me out now. Well, you know, it's funny. It's, you know, going, even when you just, to your point, you touched upon social media. We all, we all see it. Like, I'm a realtor. I'm a realtor. I'm your, every two seconds. Okay. Who are you being authentic? I'm a, I'm a person of positivity. You just look at my Facebook. You've seen it. You, it's just, I have things that just touch me where I say, hey. This is cool. I like it. And I put a, I put positive things on there, different pictures on there that maybe people would like to go, maybe a home that could be the dream home. On, on, you know, but I never go out there and say, hey, you're lucky to buy or sell a home? Give me a call. Guess where I say that? Rhetorically enough, you know, I say that for my business page, right? The social media, the personal page is a backyard barbecue. Hey, what's going on? What did you do this weekend? That's a great analogy. Your personal social media profiles are the backyard barbecue. Right. That's really well said, Antoine. Thank you. Yeah. And believe me, learn by experience, my friend. I did everything, did everything wrong. I was just like, hey, look at me. And everybody's like, why don't we give you one like or no likes or nothing? Crickets. <laughs> well, and... The, your audience knows this. For all of you doing this kind of thing, I don't care what social media platform it is, if it's video work, if it's your YouTube channel, whatever the case may be, your audience knows when you're being self-serving. They, they know it's bullshit. They see right through it. Like children can see right through it. It's exactly like that. Don't do it. You are... Even if you were the greatest real estate agent on the planet, the greatest loan originator that ever existed, your audience doesn't want to hear that. That you may be boasting the greatest number of closed transactions on the buy side this year. It doesn't matter. It's self-serving to put that kind of content out there. That I have the greatest mortgage rates on the planet. No, it's self-serving content. I'm not putting it out there. If I'm putting business related content out in the global network period it had better be for the greater good of the community right, right. bottom line it's always you know that you know adding value to the lives of others you know I, I write three things that i'm grateful for number one number two change every day number three never changes because i my number three what i'm grateful for is i'm able to add value to the lives of others the the, the social media the the Telling a barista, you just did a fantastic job and actually need it from the bottom of my heart. To tell somebody that, hey, dude, that's a great looking jacket. Or being out to the gas station, that's a good looking car. Adding value to, to others, and it doesn't cost money. You may have seen it. I, you know, I helped a, a lady out. You know, she was struggling. Uh, she didn't have enough money. And so I, I helped her out in, in the grocery store. And, and the point of why I brought that up and the point that I'm bringing this up now is we all have that ability to add, add value to the lives of others. And it doesn't necessarily have to be pocket from your pocketbook. We, how hard is it to really think it's hard because we're just selfish people, 
uh, us as human beings, that's who we are. We've got to be purposely driven to look in the good for us and other people and really let them know that, hey, you did a fantastic job watching somebody with the same old, they get the same old person, people coming in through the King Supers line as an, as an example. Hey, how's your day? Uh, just living the dream. Versus, how's your day? And I'm doing fantastic. How are you? Completely changes the con. It, it, it completely changes everything in that person's life. And it has nothing to do with real estate. But I tell you what, I've had throughout many, many times, month after month after month, every time I come in and I say, how's everything going? How's the family? What's been going on? They'll ask me, so what do you do? Oh, I help people buy, sell, and invest in real estate. Huh. My boyfriend and I were, da 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 I like, how, I like your attitude, going back to what we were saying. And, and to really add value, it's not a cliche. And, if, and to prove my point on human beings are selfish, think about this. There's a big group picture and there's 50 of you. Could be family, kids, and everything. Who's the first person you look at? You. Did I wear the right suit? Did I didn't do the back? Do I look? Oh, I shouldn't have worn that. Then you look at everybody else. It's not that bad. It's to point it out that that's how we are wired. To think about us, 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 versus what am I going to feed my mind so I can start thinking about them. The old adage, Zig Ziglar was more than a motivational speaker. If I help enough other people get what they want, I get everything that I want. So those are some tidbits that I live by. Yeah. They're brilliant. Don't, don't get me wrong. And while we uh, certainly haven't really broached the subject of what our audience would typically be into, which is good because we're going to get Jen to book you for another uh, episode of the show, uh, either late this year or early into next year, so that we can start talking about some more logistic type of stuff. But the content that we're putting out here today is unbelievably valuable. Um, it, it, and don't get me wrong, I know that our audience typically expects to hear about the gen tactics and techniques and those kinds of things that we put out there. But guys, we put it out there. This is a very different perspective, and this is more of an attitude, mindset, motivation type of workload and activity that is just as important a piece as how you're doing your birthday interactions on Facebook for your Facebook friends. Um, and, bomb bomb guy. Right. Yeah, okay. Bomb bomb bomb. Yeah. Well, video is unbelievably valuable without it's equivocation. It's easier than typing. Oh. Uh, <laughs> you think about it, right? Absolutely. I want to wish you happy. It, I, I'm a huge bomb bomb guy. I'm a huge video person. Tell me, if you're not doing video uh, in your business... Oh, your favorite. You're, you're, it's not going to happen. Absolutely. Yeah, and, and for those of you that aren't and you're local, you can certainly reach out to us. We keep a full-blown studio in the office that gets, you know, used an hour a week. If you want to come and use it, certainly feel free. I'm sure there's uh, some content on how to reach us by using that text code at the bottom of the screen. All right, so Antoine, I told you 30 minutes was going to whip by, and I was right. Um, but in the interest of making sure that people can get another piece of you, there's plenty to go around, abundance mindset. Let's do it. Give us some contact information. How do we reach out to you? Uh, you can reach out to me, Antoine Glover. That's two N's. My mom messed it up and threw an extra N in there. Antoine Glover. You can find me on Instagram as Antoine Glover, all one word. Um, I'm on LinkedIn, Antoine Glover. There's only one Antoine Glover. That's a good thing. Uh, the, the world only needs one of me, as my, uh, as my friends like to say. It's not for equal one of you, brother. Um, I'm, on, I'm on Twitter, but not, I mean, I'm just on there very rarely. Uh, but the main, my main social media is going to be Facebook and Instagram. That's just the audience. We get it. Right. No question. Um, and how about a phone number? Phone number, 719-344-0335. 719-344-0335. Uh, Glover Realty, C-O, as in Colorado, at gmail.com. Okay. Well, Antoine, again, thank you for joining us. This has been a fantastic uh, conversation. The content has been 
really robust, and it certainly strikes a chord with Jen and I, I assure you. Um, well, I need so. to hear much, Lyle. I like being around like-minded people. Well, and I think that if you do enough of this kind of work, and guys, I'm not just talking about, you know, having a conversation with Antoine or doing it on a live stream on our show so that you guys can all see it. I mean, if you actually exercise the desire and activity of spending time with like-minded individuals, that grows. This conference that Jen and I attended this weekend, this is a hundred of the top mortgage originators in the country. And I'm never the smartest guy in the room at that point, and you shouldn't be. And here's a group of people that are intentionally lifting each other up and up and up in the same manner that Antoine and I have been able to do here over this short broadcast. Right. So yeah, it's again, it's that mindset kind of thing. I, I just, I know so many people in our industries that don't want to share, don't want to teach, don't want to give away their secrets. And by the way, guys, there are no secrets. <laughs> Everybody knows all of this. It's just a matter of which of you is actually doing the work. Okay. Right. All right. So Antoine, thank you for joining us. We will absolutely have Jen book another episode with you later on because this has been uh, phenomenal. For those of you watching live or in syndication, thank you. Of course, if you want more information about us, or Antoine, if you want to uh, reach out about just the tips, if you want access to more of these episodes or to our weekly little tip, our video blog that comes out each week, if you want a copy of just the tips, by all means, use that text code at the bottom of your screen, text tips to 63566. And Jen, we didn't get uh, a, a lot of you roped into the conversation. I'm so sorry. Is there anything you want to ask Antoine? I think we're going to have more than, more than one additional show with Antoine. I'm really intrigued to talk more about your social media with my thing, for sure. But this has been absolutely wonderful. We really appreciate it. Well, thank you. I really appreciate the opportunity. And anything I can do for you guys in the future, uh, I'm, a, I'm a phone call away. Oh, there's going to be one of these episodes where Jen and Antoine are going to kick me off the show again, I can tell. All right. Uh, Jen, Jen finds a guest she likes and says, I'm going to do this one without Adam. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, again, thank you for joining us. And for those of you watching, thank you so much. And we will see you guys next week.